Okay, welcome back. In today's episode, I got a Super Nintendo cartridge. Now, this is a more desirable cart, so I'll go through more elaborate steps to try to get this one to work. So, in this video, I think will be interesting for some of my viewers who haven't seen anything like this before. So, the cart in question today is a Super Mario RPG. Now, most of these cartridges, like NES cartridges and Super Nintendo cartridges, they'll use through hole ROMs that are dip socketed, but in this case everything is surface mount on this board besides the battery of course so this makes it a little more challenging of a repair okay so I did clean this board and I did test for continuity and I did the preliminary tests of everything that before I start removing components and in this situation I'm gonna try to look at this capacitor here now here's what I did this was my process throughout this whole video to repair this cartridge so just bear in mind some of you might think oh this is not the right way to do it or this is a waste of time perhaps it is but I like to showcase everything that I did to get this to work and I tested for continuity I mean I tested for capacitance off camera with the capacitor out of circuit and it seems to be fine so I'm gonna add it back and on to the next step so one of my least favorite things is working with surface mount capacitors. I just don't like it, just as a personal preference. I know most of you probably think that's simple and it's not hard, and maybe I'm making it out to be harder than it actually is. But in this situation, I got solder on the grounding square there. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I'll wick it away with the um, desoldering braid. But just me, I, I just always never liked surface mount capacitors. So next I'm going to go over to the SRAM chip, this is the static RAM that works in conjunction with the battery. And now the battery does have 3 volts, so I, I know the battery is good. So what I'm going to do is just reheat all the legs on this chip and hopefully that solves my problem. So of course that didn't solve anything. So next I'm going to try to reflow this SA1 chip. Now this is um, an additional chip to give the Super Nintendo uh, more power to its hardware. Now I'm not going to go into the details of this chip because quite frankly I'm not too sure what this chip exactly does. But from what I understand it's similar to a CPU. It adds additional um, hardware power to the Super Nintendo. And in the past, I know chips in this style have gone bad on the Super Nintendo consoles that I've repaired, mostly being CPUs and PPUs. So this chip looks the same. I don't. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna sit here and say that just because CPUs go bad that these chips go bad. But I, I am gonna reflow this chip. Perhaps it's there's a loose trace here, and maybe it'll solve my problem. Now while I reflow this chip here, now the pitch on this pin, on these pins are really tightly grouped. So I can't, with a camera in my face and with an equipment in front of me, I can't really get a good um, visualization of the, where, what I'm doing. So off camera, I do touch up all the pins. Of course the technique is still the same, just swiping across the, the, the pins in a parallel fashion. And of course I don't make sure that there are no bridges before I test this cart. So that didn't give me any different result. So now I'm going to reflow the mask ROM. This is the ROM where all the game logic is located on this one chip. So technically this could be considered the most, uh, the most important part of this cartridge right now. So I'm going to reflow this. Hopefully I can get this game to fire up. If not, we'll have to figure out something else. Now here's a good time to note that 
if you look at the SA1 chip compared to the mask ROM chip, the pin pitch, the, uh, the grouping, the space between the legs of the chip, they're much tighter on the SA1 chip. So that one's much difficult, more difficult to um, reflow or even solder into place. Now looking back at the footage here, I have no idea why I removed that battery. So after testing everything, nothing worked. Even without a battery, I couldn't get this game to fire up. And I, for the life of me, I couldn't think of anything. So it's been about a week. I did place an order for a Japanese Famicom version of this Super Mario RPG. And I know that they're both NTSC compatible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the ROM chips. Now here, I'm not actually this stupid. Or maybe I am. I didn't think that the Famicom game was going to fit in there. <laughs> but I did try anyway. I don't know why. I mean, it was early in the morning. So what I'm hoping to get is uh, NTSC, the um, English uh, ROM on a working board and then I'll just put it in the Super Mario RPG um, North American case and hopefully have a good working copy that I can actually play. So first things first I'm gonna test to make sure this Japanese card is working because I went to seek the absolute cheapest Super Mario RPG that was actually in working condition. I didn't care if the shell was yellowed or the sticker was peeling I just wanted the absolute cheapest buy it now price. And this this cartridge is working, and it is it's even holding saves, so even the battery's working. So perfect. Um, let's get to the swap. So as you can see, the cartridge isn't in the best shape, but it is working. And here's the Super Mario RPG. Now I did close it up. It's been about a week, so I did close everything up. So we're gonna leave. Uh, see where I left off last of course I took the battery off last time and everything is still here but nothing is working so I'm gonna just remove the mask ROM off one and the other and then just swap it as you can see one board is a little bit longer than the other but the only difference being is the the ROM chips one is an English version the other one is a Japanese version but more or less everything is the same so just swap these two should be good now here's a, an important thing to note now now the SA1 chip could be bad. I don't actually know what's wrong with the Eng the English co copy that I have. So instead of switching one by one, it could be the RAM, it could be the SA1 chip, it could be some other fault, it could be a broken trace somewhere, it could even be this little uh, eight-legged component that's bad. So instead of going one by one by one, I'll just remove the ROM and swap it over because I know that the Japanese version of the car the Japanese cartridge is in perfect working condition. So. If I only need, if the most important part of my English copy of the game is the ROM, then I, and I don't really need the rest of the board, let me take the ROM off and slap it on the Japanese board. And if that works, it works. If it doesn't, this project ends right there. So actually, I don't have the board taped down. I, I, I've been meeting to get some Captain tape for a while. I haven't ordered any, and, it would, and Amazon Prime would probably deliver it in a day. Probably order it today. So the board is slipping around. I apologize for this, but I do eventually get it off, and you could have, you could see clearly what I, how I got it off. Just a couple of seconds, or about a less than a minute worth of heat, and the board, the chip comes right off. And I'll do the same thing for the Japanese chip. Now I've been using No Clean Flux, and I, to be honest with you, I really don't like No Clean Flux. And the unfortunate thing is, I did buy a large, rather large bottle of it, so I'm gonna try to use it. Um, liberally try just to get rid of it or just to not have it go to waste so as you can see the the no clean flux tends to evaporate really quick and the other flux that I had it's the same brand the MG chemicals and I'm not gonna say no clean is bad but the the, the my previous flux is much better than my current the, the no clean flux that I'm using so I, I mean some people prefer it me for I just don't I mean just that's me personally so now these double-sided, these, these surface mount chips with, with pins only on, on each side instead of all four sides isn't the most difficult thing things to line up, but this is giving me more trouble than it, it should just because I didn't clear the pads with the desoldering braid because I kind of want to reuse the solder on these pads so I don't have to add anymore. I could just add this component, this chip back into place with a little bit of flux and the solder that's already on the board. So that's why the chip was teetering a bit. Plus with the camera in my face, it was a little bit challenging, but these chips aren't too tough.
So I did clean up the, the board with some alcohol. And here's the finished board. Here's the old board. So I did, you can see the battery's off and the, the ROM chip is off. Here's the Japanese ROM. I'm actually going to put that ROM onto the old board just to have it stored there for, I guess, safekeeping. And perhaps maybe it is a RAM chip on the old board and I could just swap the RAM and get that cartridge to run if I ever find a, I think it's a 264 uh, k RAM. But here, as you can see, the cartridge is running, so I'm super excited about that. So it seems like the game is still holding the saves from the Japanese board. So the, the SRAM chip is still holding the Japanese saves. So obviously here it looks like it's glitched out. The only thing I can think of is the English translation doesn't have the Japanese character text. So it looks like it glitches out. So, But just to be safe, I'm going to play a little bit. I'm going to create my own um, save and play a little bit of the game. Make sure the game is is playing it is working and now I'll get to the save point and and overwrite one of these saves and see what happens so I'm gonna just show you some of this footage here I'll fast forward it but if it's if it gets too long I will cut it just to the save point now I never actually played Super Mario RPG so I might have to sit down and play this from what I heard it was one of the best games on the Super Nintendo now I, I did enjoy Chrono Trigger that was probably my in my top three Super Nintendo games maybe and it's definitely the best RPG that I played so far on the Super Nintendo but um yeah RPGs they do tend to take a lot of time uh, if, if you're busy so I mean it, it's gonna be a while before I get some free time to sit down and play this game but I'm looking forward to it now it's just one of those things where Nintendo and on a Super Nintendo just seeing a turn-based Mario game right now they have uh, Mario Luigi Superstar Saga series and they did do turn-based games later on but this being the first and they partnered with Square at the time so it's really unique game now here's the save and I'm gonna overwrite the first one here and see if it takes it seems like it's taking so this game seems to be working properly so here's the board now I did mention that this board was a little bit longer so I'm hoping it fits and fortunately enough it does fit and here's the old board it fits just it's a little bit shorter but it actually the new board actually fits a little bit better it, it's less wobbly so let me close it up and this is working I'm really happy how this turned out so as promised I'm gonna put the Japanese ROM on this English board and I'm just going to show you, um, I know some of you mentioned that you like seeing soldering. So I hope that you guys can enjoy just me soldering this chip into place. Now it's nothing spectacular, don't get me wrong, it's nothing special. But I will just, it, this is the safest way to store this chip that I can think of. So I'm just going to put it here in, into circuit. It doesn't take long, so I don't mind. So here's both cartridges back reassembled and this is now working so I'm going to see if the save is still there. So the save seems to be intact so I'm really happy how this cartridge turned out. Um, there's one more from the lot that I recently bought that's working so I'm happy about that. And if you like this video please share this with your friends. Give this a like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you for watching.